Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to Japan. It's B1 B League Championship action quarterfinals game three. The decider between Shimane Sasuno Magic and Alvar Tokyo. Well, not sure how many people expected Alvar Tokyo to win as convincingly as they did in game two to force this decider of course uh, they will be meeting Ryuko Golden Kings uh, unless Shimano uh, Susunu Magic Shimane Susuzu Magic come back uh, and win today and you can see also uh, things shaping up in the other part of the quadrant here's what happened in game two Alvark came out Osakabi uh, the young uh, rising star of Alvar Tokyo hitting that three-pointer. Perrin Buford, you, with one of his turnovers, just was not effective at all. And uh, that turnover led to a fast break dunk by Yoshi. There was a brief... Paul's uh, for hope with Kanamaru hitting that three, but then uh, another of the problems emerged and Seba Saiz, both with his scoring, his rebounding, his three-point shooting, especially just the energy, the intensity was so much better. I mean, that was, that was about it right there for Perrin Buford. He just could not get anything working. They did such a good job. Alvar Tokyo taking him out of the game. Shosando Perhaps not quite as influential throughout the course of the game, but he was able to score on that drive, and they just really made it look easy. But about the only thing you could say for uh, Shimani was that, well, it was just one loss, and they still had hope. So uh, Shohei Goto, Perrin Buford, number three, say Ando, who had that great first game. Nick K, number four, pretty quiet overall. Came off the bench last game, number six. Hiromu Kitagawa, and then Reed Travis, and number eight, Ryu Abe, uh, 13, 14, Kosuke, uh, Kosuke Kanamaru. Number 15, uh, Ryosuke Shirohama, 22, Akihisi Kosaka. And then Yiki Williams, number 28, all turning out today for Coach Paul Hanari. Now, remember, they're at home uh, for all three games. They were able to use that to their advantage in game one. But Alvark Tokyo, again, uh, battled back to win game two and really seize the momentum in this series. And uh, all of the confidence you think is with uh, Alvark Tokyo as Nick K looks at the game plan uh, that's being uh, spoken about here by his coach, Paul Hanari. Nick K, the Australian international bronze medal winner at the Tokyo Olympics. So people here in Japan know him well. For Alvark Tokyo, Remember, this is a team that's won the B-League championship twice, or at least the club. Uh, Genki Kojima, number one. Jordan Taylor, number two. Hirotaka Yoshi, number three. Number nine, Shuto Ando. We saw him in the highlights. Zach Baranski, number 10. Number 11, Scythe. Uh, Shohei Kikuchi, uh, number 13. Number 21, uh, Jin Hiro, Gen Hirawaiwa. Hirawaiwa. Uh, and then uh, no Ryan Rossiter again. That's a big blow for them. And uh, Daiki Tanaka, how good was he in that last game? He was terrific, along with Reju Sasakura, Alex Kirk, number 53, and Taiki Osakabe. And uh, Luka Pavicevic really underlined in that game, too, just how good of a coach he is uh, by getting his team uh, ready to play. I mean, you looked at the players, and they were laser-focused, much like Pavicevic was. Uh, for him, it was all about... Uh, the collective, uh, the idea of going out, controlling the rebounds, stopping the fast break of Shimani, and then obviously taking away uh, the most talented players uh, of Shimani, not allowing them to get into the flow of the game. I just thought it was a masterclass performance uh, by Pavicevic in terms of getting a team ready to play. And when, you're, when your players embody the, the look and execute he does have the advantage of having a player like kirk who's been on both of the title winning teams he's been with alvark tokyo uh, for quite some time and tanaki as well uh, to have two players like that 
Uh, that's what helps you overcome an 0-1 deficit in the quarterfinals. And Jordan Taylor's not too bad either, nor is that man right there, Yoshi. So starting five will be uh, Jordan Taylor. It'll be Hirotaki Yoshi. It'll be Seba Scythe, as well as uh, Daiki Tanaka. And uh, last but certainly not least, Taiki Osakabe, number 75, who just kind of uh, at the beginning of what is uh, going to be a, a terrific career. You feel like watching him play this season. He has really grown and developed. And I, having watched all of, all of the teams play, uh, and that includes Ryuku Golden Kings, I'm not sure if this Alvark Tokyo team is able to play the way that it did in game two. I'm not sure anybody wants to go up against them because they were tough. So you see the game one stats, and uh, not only did Shimani out-rebound Alvark Tokyo, uh, but they hit seven more threes. Uh, they did, in fact, hit one more three in game two. But look at the rebounding. It was uh, decidedly in favor, 50 to 28, in favor of Alvark Tokyo. But, you know, stats do not always tell the whole story, uh, but the defense uh, overall was really good for Alvark Tokyo, limiting in game two. Shimani to 10 of 35 shooting inside the arc. And then you have all the other stats. Uh, bench play, points off the bench, points in the paint. And the beauty of quarterfinals and, and series in general is that you play each other so often there really aren't any secrets. So you have to have tactical adjustments. You know, the coaches have to really put their heads together and figure out how to counter against another team's strengths uh, or what it was that allowed the other team to get on top of them in one game. And uh, you have to come out and execute it. So I'm sure that Pavicevic is anticipating some changes uh, from this Shimane team. Reed Travis, one of the better players in Japan, had a, had a really good start in game two, but he came out after about seven and a half minutes. And it was after his departure that I felt like the momentum uh, was kind of lost and I just wonder really you got to get that man going right there how do you get Perrin Buford going to where he is one of the best players on the court that is not what Pavicevic wants he wants him to be a non-factor like he was in game two say Ando had the 16 points in game one in, first, in the first half of game one. And uh, he was okay in game two. Now, Nick Kay comes back in. Nick Kay back into the starting five. I think that's important. And Shirohama comes out and also Williams. So today it'll be Reed Travis who comes off the bench. And I suppose... I suppose... Paul Hanari uh, thinks that maybe the formula for, for game one in terms of uh, who starts, who plays the rotation uh, worked better. So he will bring Reed Travis off the bench. And uh, maybe maybe that's more of an attempt as well to get Nick K going early uh, because he did not really look in sync at the beginning of the game. So the starting five, K, Williams, Shirahama, Buford, and Ando for Shimani and for Alvark Tokyo, Jordan Taylor, Tanaka, Yoshi, Osakabe, and Scythe. Well, we wanted to highlight Ando and Tanaka. Fascinating uh, comparison. Uh, you know, Ando's numbers were not bad by any stretch, but trust me, anybody that watched that game would have said that Tanaka's impact on the game was far greater. Those two guys aren't necessarily going up against each other all of the time, but uh, it would have been hard to have improved on the performance of Tanaka in game two. Ando, of course, used to play for Alvark Tokyo. In fact, won the title with him the second time around. So good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching. Uh, we are in Japan, and it is Shimane in the blue taking on Albert Tokyo in the white. The deciding game three. 
That start is so crucial for both teams. Tanaka comes out, misses, but the long rebound. Buford slow getting out on Tanaka and a little lethargy, a little perhaps uh, understandable considering it's the uh, third consecutive day these two teams uh, have met each other. Aaron Buford, can he get it going early? It doesn't matter if he's scoring or if he's assisting. Oh, whoa, what a play by Kay. And already, Hinari's decision to start the Australian Kay uh, pays dividends as Kay spins and banks it in. I'm not sure there's a player in Australia anyway who's improved more the past several years than that man right there, uh, especially with his affiliation with the national team. Now the drive, the basket, a little bit uh, out of control by Osakabe. I don't know if he was hoping somebody was going to follow it up, but it wasn't a good result. Now Ando, saying Ando, passing back and forth with Nick K, going between the legs. Just a little bit of energy, and Ando with the long two. And this 4-0 uh, start, I thought, was probably more so than any, any team imperative today for Shimani. They had to get the bad taste out of that game two loss out of their mouths. Scythe, short, looks at the referee, but that's uh, that's no foul. He's gotta, he's gotta accept just a little bit of contact. Nick K. Ando again, good, wow. And the former Alvark Tokyo man strokes it. Okay, so I thought it was 7-0. Now that earlier shot might have been a three-pointer. We'll go back and have a look at it. So this is the first one. Yeah, that was a three, that was not a two. It was initially marked as a two and here's the second three. And Pavicevic thinking, wait a minute, that used to be my guy. Now he's over here playing for Shimane. And Shimane, the confidence has to have been restored after this start. So coming out of the timeout, Alvar Tokyo not looking quite as crisp, maybe even not as focused as game two. So they don't want to fall any further behind here at the start. Shimane giving up the long three. That's an air ball. Kirk, great substitution getting Kirk into the game. Uh, but then the turnover, they really just... Uh, as much as Albert Tokyo looked different in game two from game one, now it looks like they've gone back to their game one form. They do not look right up to the pace here at the beginning of the game. Ando steps out of bounds. And that's interesting with uh, Scythe guarding Ando. I think say Ando might have been thinking about blowing past Scythe, although Scythe is a pretty good athlete. In fact, he's a really good athlete. Here is Kirk. And Kirk. And he is looking over at the referee to say, I just got hit in the face. And yeah, I think he was uh, probably fouled about three times there. Williams 
gave up a lot to Kirk. And Kirk might just have to take a few punches here today. And continue to maintain control of his emotions. He was very demonstrative in game two. So you can uh, perhaps understand that maybe he was getting under the skin. Just a little bit of Williams. And that's what exactly what you expect from your two-time championship winner. So come into the game, get something down low. Even if you get fouled, go to the line and make a couple of free throws. Now Buford, back to K. He's left wide open. Well, Tanaka very slow in reacting to Nick K, the boomer. Fast start for Nick K. And again, great decision to start him. And now Ando takes it away. Sloppy play by Osakabe. Ando on the baseline. Well, that is what you call a veteran taking advantage of the young man, Pavicevic. His team better wake up. They're already down by 11 points. Ando also has checked into the game. Goes to Ando, gives it off. Scythe. Tanaka for three. And Tanaka just looked like a different player today. He needs something to fall. Puts it up again. Still doesn't go. Williams down on the ground. Both players and Ando comes up with it. Say Ando. And Kovicevic, I think, needs to make a, a couple more changes. Say Ando dictating uh, the way this game is being played right now, much like he did in game one in that first half. Nick K. Falls down. There's Perrin Buford. And puts it up and in. Well, Alvar Toko looked like a team that perhaps used all of its fuel in game two. Because they have started awfully today. Just two points in the first five minutes of the contest. When you're struggling, you like to get a good shot. Get it down low. It's not an open jumper. Scythe, dribble, look, boy. It is just going from bad to worse. Shirohama gets it over. K, and K blocked. Very slow down the court. They're able to prevent another layup. Now Ando guarding Ando. And Ando gets the block. Show to Ando. See if that sparks him. For the format of these playoffs is a real challenge mentally and physically for these teams to play three games in a row in as many days. The foul on Perrin Buford on Osakabe. And that was one area where Osakabe did very well, really, in the first two games, uh, being able to drive and really attack. And does not help Alvar Tokyo to see Reed Travis get off the bench. You know, he's chomping at the bit. Well, Jordan Taylor comes in. I would look for Jordan Taylor to be very assertive here offensively. Ando, and Ando, thankfully to the, excuse me, yeah, Ando, thankfully to the rescue for Alvar Tokyo. Looks like he actually is uh, up to speed here. K. Oh, boy, K just kept going. Kirk knocks it away, but into the hands of K. Another attempt. Now Reed Travis gets it down low. Nowhere to go. He forces his way, and it goes off of Travis. Kanamaru also in the game, number 14 now for, Sh for Shimane. They'll have to keep an eye on him. Does not look like Pavicevic uh, has uh, been able to sleep very much. He looks pretty tired. T 
Taylor. And Yoshi. Oh, what a big shot that was. Huge shot. Reed Travis going back to Ando. Boy, Ando. What can you say? The man with the plan. Wow. A star quality today from Seiya Ando. Nice drive. Much better. That's what they need. You could beat some pressure by putting it on the deck and getting it to the basket. And Yoshi now has scored five consecutive points for Alvar Tokyo. A nice swat as well. Up ahead to Osakabe. He needs to go strong. He does. Great work by Osakabe. Even with Reed Travis threatening to block it, he was able to shield him with his body, with his left arm. And lay it up and in. So back to a seven-point deficit. Okay, bounce pass. Kanamaru missed an easy one. I think he'd rather be out there shooting threes than driving to the basket. Behind the back from... Oh, boy. And the foul called on Reed Travis. Getting up to get a hand in the face and then makes contact. Nice pump fake. Oh, it says uh, Kirk. It says he literally got a hand in the face. I think Kirk knows that the exaggerated movement on the foul, when he's fouled, is important. He needs to go down to make sure he's going to get that call, but it did look like that Reed Travis got him in the face. Back to a six-point deficit. And Scythe comes back into the game. Able to inbound the basketball. Perrin Buford still not quite the same player that he was in game one. Despite the good start from his team here early, and he gets rejected. Taylor gets it over to Tanaka. Taylor back to Scythe. And now a little bit more of the same from game two. Scythe and Alvar Tokyo wide awake now, pulling back to within three points. So great response from Alvar Tokyo. And really, it was Shota Ando Yoshi, I think, that kind of uh, led the spirited fight back. Of course, uh, Alex Kirk also checking into the game and helping. And now it looks more like the Alvar Tokyo that we saw in game two. Better defense leading to the break. And Osakabe doing a great job of finishing on that drive. Okay, play resumes coming out of the timeout by Shimane. They lead it by 
three points. Endo. Been the best player and great defense, forcing the turnover. Scythe gets it over to Taylor. And Taylor, again, doing the business here for Alvar Tokyo defensively. Ando, back to Scythe. And Scythe is fouled, and for the second time in the quarter, Reed Travis has fouled the jump shooter. And that is just a bad play by Reed Travis. You got to get a hand in the face. But you have to control your body. You can't, you can't fly into the shooter. It's already a tough enough shot to make. And now Side can pull to within, uh, pull his team to within one point. And he will not because he's missed the first. So now it's a two-point game. Shirahama, or Abe, excuse me, number 13. And Williams with the moving screen fouls Taylor whose defense has been terrific the last couple of possessions. Shimani have led by as many as 13 points. And right now, Alvar Tokyo with a chance to tie it or even take the lead with a three-pointer. Tuta Ando, back to sight. Could have had the three if he'd won it. He hands it off to Taylor. Taylor takes it in and scores and knots the contest at 18. Thirty-two year old Jordan Taylor. Aaron Buford, nowhere to go. Passes it outside. Boy, Reed Travis looked, looks today like the player who hasn't started as well because he did he wasn't in the starting lineup. Much like Kay was. Aaron Buford. Williams with the offensive rebound. Oh boy, that was a badly needed offensive rebound and put back. Now, final seconds ticking off the clock. Will Alvar Tokyo get something? Oh, they give away an open jumper. Do Shimande to Jordan Taylor. And he misses it. But even so, most of the momentum with Alvar Tokyo right now trailing 20 to 18 at the end of one. Well, 11 points for Say Ando leading the way for Shimane. The Susanu Magic needing their point guard who used to play for Alvar Tokyo to give them a lift and it, everything was going according to plan. They were up 13 points. The switch in the starting lineup paid dividends, putting Nick Kay back in instead of Reed Travis. But Alvar Tokyo have come back. Yoshi with five points. Scythe with four. Kirk with three. And Jordan Taylor's terrific defense. Who he also has four assists and three rebounds to go with his two points. So there's Sayando. 
He's been really good in spurts and halves. And not just in his scoring, you know, he does other things that help Shimane win basketball games. And it's one of the tough things that a coach has to decide, maybe, I would think, that when a player is scoring in bunches, playing so well, do you do you risk do you want to take him out, but risk him losing that feel that he's got in the game? You don't want him to cool off both uh, in terms of uh, his ability to knock down those shots and also uh, maybe lose a little bit of his intensity or his feel for the game. But this is the guy that maybe has to get going, Perrin Buford, for Shimane to get to the finish line. Here he is, getting the bounce pass. And it just is not working for Perrin Buford. Good bounce. Well, that was the plan. Nick K got it to him. But again, Alvar Tokyo fully aware that Perrin Buford is the player that Shimane wants to get in the flow. The question is, can, can Perrin Buford free himself and get back to the player that he needs to be? But without forcing it. Shoot Ando, bounce pass, Scythe right at the line. Or oh, Shimane, fortunate there, Scythe. Now Perrin Buford from the corner. Over to Kay. Great job, Williams, boxing out. And they foul, They call the foul on Ando. Yeah, he pulled him on the left shoulder. That's what it was. That was a good spot by the referee. Can Kanamaru give this uh, Shimane team a lift? Tanaka guarding him. I think Ando, because maybe hasn't played quite as many minutes in the first two games, seems to really be able to offer something defensively for Alvar Tokyo today. Playing a lot more early here than he has been. Perrin Buford going to work on Ando, and he's fouled by Ando. Good job, Perrin Buford. Maybe getting to the free throw line is going to help him out. Oh, good hands there by and uh, not too much done wrong. We've seen that a lot in this uh, in this quarterfinal showdown. As uh, Ando goes out, you know some of the players they they want to play defense, and you want to get up as and tight as tight as possible. Yet you got to make sure that you don't kind of uh, barge your way into them. It looked like he did okay there, but the referee decided there was a little bit too much contact. And Perrin Buford, who just right now. Needs to see that basketball go through the basket just to get some positive vibes. Because you feel like if he can get his game going, then it's a completely different complexion to this decider. So the momentum swinging back a little bit now to Shimane. They go up 22 to 18, nearly a minute into this second quarter. Oh, excellent work, Yoshi attacking and being fouled by Nick Kay. And Yoshi also has been terrific today. Nothing flashy with Yoshi, but very big, strong, and does a lot of lot of things maybe that don't show up in the stats the stats that help his team win games. Zach Baranski is also going to come into the game. Rebounds the basketball very well, Baranski. Also another of the players that's been in those title winning teams of Alvark Tokyo. So he's Alvark Tokyo to the core, much like Kirk and Tanaka. Fans making some noise, trying to get Yoshi to miss, and Yoshi takes his time and sinks the first. So Yoshi makes 
Booth. And now he's going to take a seat. And Alex Kirk comes back in. I know Tom Hovass, the Japan national team coach, watching these games, assessing everybody. There's Perrin Buford. And I really think that by Perrin Buford being, you know, getting to the free throw line and hitting those free throws, just helping him to, to find some, some way uh, to start scoring, it's going to help him. And now he's already hit a jumper, but Alex Kirk goes to the other end and closes the gap to two. And you got to love Alex Kirk if you're an Alvar Tokyo fan. And the foul is Scythe. In fact, it might be on Tanaka. Buford, and he's fouled and is going back to the line. Don't look now, but Perry Buford has uh, found his way into the game, and now we're starting to see the version of Perry Buford that Shimane desperately need. save the version they need, but he missed both free throws. Huge response by Perrin Buford after Saba Sites basket. Tanaka over to Kirk. And the long rebound to Baranski. Baranski really has a nose for the basketball. Osakabe. Williams did a great job defensively. Hands up now, Perrin Buford has it. Buford going between the legs. Into the corner, Nick Kay gets it back to Buford. He hands it off to Williams. And the foul has been called as well. And Perrin Buford, not just about the scoring for him, it's also about his ability to find his teammates. He's very unselfish. And Saya Ando. His team, having trailed by one, has gone back in front by three. And here is Williams scoring after the pass. Great pass as well by Nick K. That looked like a well-oiled machine. And they are back on top with a chance to go up by four. Again, Buford. I mean, Buford has to be able to give them Maybe not his best, but he's got to give him something. I mean, he, he gave him nothing in game two. He was outstanding in game one, and he knows he was not a factor in game two. But, you know, what he's done well is he hasn't forced it. 
He's kind of allowed the game to come to him. He knows, he knows very well that Albert Tokyo are trying to take him out of the game. So it's really, how do you manage that as a player? Still be able to contribute, uh, but you have to understand uh, the other team has uh, kind of almost designed their attack defensively to stop you. So you have to figure out how to contribute. Alex Kirk continues to be a valuable man for this uh, Alvark Tokyo team. Fascinating game three. The winner will take on the Ryuku Golden Kings in the semifinals. Ryuku, best record during the regular season. They dispatched Akita, Northern Happiness, in the quarterfinals, 2-0. This one is far more competitive. Williams, can he complete the three-point play? He does indeed. And it's back to a four-point advantage. Yoshi back in the game. Gets it over to Taylor. Wasakabi in the right corner. Taylor launches. Baranski challenges for the rebound. It goes off of Shimane. Great work. Alex Kirk keeping the basketball alive. Kanamaru, a player that has yet to get into this. He had a big first half in game one. He's back in the game, guarding Osakabe. Taylor, back outside. Yoshi for three. Oh boy, goodness me. Great play by Taylor. Passing it back out to Yoshi. He just looks like the best version of himself today. Back to a one point game. And now a turnover gives it back over. And another foul on Reed Travis. And today, Reed Travis is the player who just can't find his way into the game. The call from moving screen. Well, neither he nor his coach, Hanare, agreed with that call. And Hanari must be thinking, well, I started Nick K today. That got him going. But now, Reed Travis coming off the bench. I can't get him going. Ando back to Kirk. And Kirk does a terrific job of finishing through the contact with Nick K. And Alvar Tokyo back on top. What a game, folks. The decider. The winner to face Ryuku. Nick K, the Australian international off the front of the rim. and Excuse me, side of the rim. It goes out of bounds. Alex Kirk taking one for the team. Thirty years of age, Alex Kirk. I really like the way that Jordan Taylor is playing at the point for this team. Now, Osakabe, can he get something penetration-wise? He's going to get it back to Yoshi. The defense picking up for Shimane. Taylor loses it, gets it back. Four on the shot clock. Taylor gets in, fades. Well, did a great job of getting an open look, but then missed it. Perrin Buford, what a bounce pass. Perrin Buford, and now Nick K can't get it going. He had a good start, Nick K, but now he's missed a few shots. Osakabe. Going between the legs, puts it up. It's a long two if it goes. Not even close. Four and a half minutes remaining in this opening half. Very tight. Shimane, they led by 13 points 
But right now, the trail by one. Say Ando, the bounce pass. And Nick K is fouled by Kirk, who goes right over and helps Nick K up. So a timeout with four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in this first half. The way it started, it seemed that Shimane might just pull away and get an easy one, but Alvar Tokyo took them a while to warm up, but here they are playing much better. I think, you know, some tiredness evident in both teams, third game in as many days. Well, Kirk breathing heavily over there on the bench. He's got seven points, three rebounds. I think he's coming out. Yoshi, meanwhile, coming back in. He's leading the way with 10 points. He's hit both of his attempts from three-point range. So Nick Kay will go back to the free throw line. Nick Kay, the Australia international, who really shot to prominence uh, outside of Australia when he played in the Asian qualifiers for Australia. And he earned a place in there for the FIBA Basketball World Cup, and he earned a spot in the World Cup team. And then he uh, has become a linchpin, or main, one of the main guys coming off the bench for a very talented Australia team. Here he is at the line. Missing the first free throw. Having a makes one of two. So knotted at 30. And Ando misses from three-point range. Now Perrin Buford. Over to Shirahama. Buford dribbles right. And the hands from Scythe just takes it right away. Boy, just put him up. And now Taylor explodes down the floor. Oh, what a terrific play by Jordan Taylor. But it all started with the defense. It all started with Scythe, the Spain international. Seeing Buford trying to make the pass and just put his hand straight up and gets the steal. Look at that. Just takes it right away and then gets it to his guard. And then Taylor assesses and he goes right to the rim. Taylor's been excellent today. The Sidewalk Tokyo team getting it done without Ryan Rossiter. Not able to play in this quarterfinal showdown. Taylor has been worth his weight in gold the last two days, really driving this team.
Well, Perrin Buford is back. He's not all the way back. He still made a couple of mistakes, a couple of turnovers, but he's better than he was in game two. And again, he needs to be, I think, a little bit more influential if his team is going to have a chance to win this game. He knows it. He's trying. It's not easy when the other team tries to freeze you out of the game. Oh, what a terrific shot. Great make by Katamaru. And that is another player. Stands the reason he has to get it going. Taylor pulls up and gets it right back. Six points for Taylor now. Nick Kay, the bounce pass to Buford. Oh, boy. Beautiful finish by Buford. Could have been problematic, but he kind of twisted and got a, the easiest of layups. Twisted in midair, just laid it over the rim. Two to Ando. Back to side for three. Too long. So yeah, Ando, can he impact the game the way that he did early on here at the end of the second half uh, to help Shimane go to halftime with some renewed confidence? Buford over to Kay, open, count it. Nick Kay, another three-pointer. Second three of the game for Nick Kay. He's got nine points. Say Ando's 11 leading the scoring. Boy, tough play, trying to get it to Tanaka. And suddenly, Shimane with the bit between the teeth. Say, Ando. And Nick Kay gets great position on the offensive rebound. So, Nick Kay continues to cause problems. He's got three assists and three rebounds to go with his... I think he's got nine points. Yeah, nine points. So Shota Ando goes out. Shuto Ando rather goes out. And now Nick K is at the free throw line. So Shimane, they led by 13. Then they fell behind. Now they've got a chance to go up by five if he can hit this second free throw. You know the fans going on an emotional roller coaster watching this game, watching their team take the lead, then struggle, fall behind, now come back and take the lead. Tanaka, he hasn't done anything today. He misses another one. 0 for 5 for Tanaka. Saya Ando dancing around up top. Gets away, gets some space. And boy, he it looked good, but he was a little right with that attempt. Defense. Taylor over to Scythe. Jump hook. Well, Nick K wasn't going to foul him. He wasn't going to give him the layup, though, that's for sure. Ando again. Back to K. Eight on the shot clock. Say Ando stops. Back over to Williams. Oh, beautiful, beautiful basketball by Say Ando. Didn't force it. And Williams did the right thing by drifting in, finding an open place where he could bank in a two. And the lead is growing back to seven points. So Alvark, I think, want to take as much time off the shot clock as they can. Oh, no, they don't. Taylor decides to take a three, so 10 seconds remain. 
They don't want to foul. They're already over the limit. Perrin Buford for three. That was short. They get it back, and Ando, that's not going to count. So we are at the break. What a fascinating game three we have in the quarterfinals between Shimane and Alvark Tokyo. It is Shimane who lead it 41 to 37.
Well, what a game three it has been today in the quarterfinals as uh, both these teams trade blows uh, with the bid of taking on Ryuka Golden Kings in the semifinals. And Seiya Ando came out and really set the tone for a strong first quarter for his team, much like he did in game one. Slowly but surely, this uh, Alvark Tokyo team got back into it, but Seiya Ando causing all sorts of problems. Shuda Ando, meanwhile, showing that he honors that, that name as well, Ando. Uh, with some excellent play, as does uh, Yoshi coming out and scoring uh, 10 points. Say Ando lining up the player that really can't leave him open. Kanamaru had a slow start. He did hit a shot later on. Osakabe, that was his best play, getting out on the break and scoring. Hasn't been quite as influential as he was in game two. Alex Kirk has been solid the last two days, as has this man, Seba Saif. Spinning, going up strong. Perrin Buford much better today than in game two. And some of his playmaking, his passing coming to the fore as well. Right there, and you can see the celebration. Doesn't matter who scores the points, just as long as Shimane do. But that time, Scythe knew the pass was coming, reached up, gave it to Taylor, and Jordan Taylor went right in and scored two big points. Kanamaru fading back and hitting. I mean, he has to, much like Perrin Buford, needs to give Shimane something. Uh, Nick Kay has uh, overall been very positive today for Hanare's team. So as we look at the, the numbers here, 41-37, 10 of 18 inside the arc for Shimane, 9 of 18 for Alvark. One more three-pointer has been made by Shimane. And uh, one more free throw has been made by Alvark. And Shimane have done a much better job on the glass today, out-rebounding Alvark Tokyo, 19 to 13. So Shimani bled by as many as 13 points. 10 of their points coming into paint uh, compared to 12 for Alvark Tokyo. And also for uh, Shimani points from the bench. Uh, nine compared to just two bench, excuse me, points from the bench for Alvark compared to two for Shimane. So 11 points for both K and Ando, and 10 for Buford, 10 for, for uh, Yoshi, 9 for Jordan Taylor, 7 for Sabeth, Sabeth Scythe, Sebastian Scythe for Albert Tokyo. So the Matsui City Gymnasium has uh, the fans that came to this game enjoying today's proceedings much more than they did uh, yesterday when their team was basically run out of the gym. Williams uh, leading the way in the rebounding for Shimani with six, a game high six in fact. Say Ando has four and Nick Kay has four. Jordan Taylor, Alex Kirk each with three rebounds and Zach Varansky coming out as he does uh, in limited minutes, just under three minutes and getting a couple of rebounds. You can also see coming out his overall impact on the game, the four assists from Buford. So he does a little bit of everything, much as uh, Jordan Taylor does, who has a game high six assists, three assists for Kay, across the board contributions for him, and say Ando as well with two. Two assists for Shuto Ando. Also, uh, 
Scythe and Tanaka each with one assist. Daiki Tanaka has not had a good game today. He's 0 for 5 from the floor. He was so good in game two. And much like Shimane need Perrin Buford to come out and play well, this this Alvark Tokyo team needs that man right there to, to raise his game a little bit. Second half action underway here in the Matsui City Gymnasium, Alvark Tokyo, and an offensive foul called on Seba Scythe, moving screen. And that's a good call. He got there late, just kind of leaned into him. Uh, tough drive and Finish not there for Endo. Now, Tanaka, great job being aggressive, getting in there and earning a trip to the line. And I think for Tanaka, that's a good sign because you know what? If the jump shot is not falling, try to make an impact. I and mean, that was a great effort at the block by Buford. But when plan A doesn't work or maybe your jumper isn't falling, Get your feet wet. Get in the paint. Drive to the rim. I'm pretty sure Pav Pavicevic probably told Tanaka, hey, listen, you know, don't just settle for jump shots. Put pressure on that defense. So already much better for Daike Tanaka. He's got his first two points, and it's a two-point game. Well, Japan, one of the host nations for the FIBA Basketball World Cup next year. It's going to be spectacular. 32 teams. Of course, they hosted an incredible World Cup Japan back in 2006. The ball goes out of bounds. And back over to Alvark, Tokyo. I think a lot of people would say that the FIBA Basketball World Cup, when a lot of these players were, were, were really young, Paul Hanare was, uh, in fact, at that as an assistant coach with New Zealand. I think a lot of people would say that's the best ever FIBA Basketball World Cup, considering how everything unfolded, especially the Spain, USA, Argentina, and Greece. Now, Taylor falling down and bumped. So Shirahama called for the foul on Jordan Taylor. Like how the Albark Tokyo players have uh, Different names of uh, the models of the Toyota cars on the back of their jersey. And Taylor gets swatted by Paris Bu Perrin Buford. Wow. What a play by Perrin Buford. Don't see Taylor get rejected like that very often. Ando dribbles left. And now... Offensive foul on Williams trying to set a screen. We've seen players struggle to set that screen or that pick. Defender knows that it's coming. Yoshi hands it off to Taylor. Tanaka. See if he puts the ball in the deck again. Well, he's guarded by Buford. Probably doesn't favor that matchup. He gets the pick. Here's Tanaka again. Oh, what a play. Oh, doesn't make it, but terrific effort by Yoshi on the glass. Scythe 
Hands it off to Taylor again. Eight on the shot clock. Taylor dribbles left. Now gets into the paint, puts up a little runner. In fact, there was a jump shot. Momentum carrying him forward. Say Ando to Williams. They go back and forth. Ando now launches it from behind the arc and it goes in and out. Shimane have yet to score in the second half. In fact, just two points have been scored in, in the second half and they're the free throws by Tanaka. Scythe doesn't want to settle. Spins, turns, charges. And Nick K does Nick K things. He is just so fundamentally sound. He understands. Get his feet set. I mean, he is. Look at his numbers today. He's got 11 points. Okay, he's only shooting three of eight overall from the floor. But he's two of four from three-point range. He's three of four at the free throw line. He's got four rebounds, a couple of offensive rebounds, three assists. And, you know, he just helps your team. Whether it's passing, whether it's getting his feet set on defense on that occasion, and now Buford. Buford drives in. Oh boy, how did he not make that? And Alex Kirk did all he could do, stay there. Didn't go for the block, just raised his hands. Great, great job. Yoshi, oh, a little Euro step from Yoshi. Goodness me, what a play by Yoshi. Yoshi's been their most polished player offensively today. He's been terrific. The dish to Williams. Oh, nice play, Williams. He's able to go up for that shot about midway down the lane. So he doesn't charge. It's all about footwork and having, you know, being able to shoot the basketball from a couple of meters out, really, for a player like Williams. Here's Taylor, steps to his left, goes in and out. Taylor, or Kirk kept it alive. Taylor hands it off. Oh, what a play. What a play by Kirk and Taylor. And the beneficiary is Yoshi. And the beauty of that play is just that extra effort that you get on the glass from Kirk and the extra effort from Taylor, and you end up with a layup and a potential three-point play. And now the, it's, it's incredible, this series, how players kind of drift in and out. I mean, you know, maybe in game one and early in game two, not a better player than Travis. But then in this game, he has been non-existent. He's got three fouls. Now he's come into the game. So he gets a rebound. Yoshi fails to convert. He ties it at 43. The offense has dried up in this third quarter. Here's Travis for three. And he backs himself, but he puts it up a little bit too much. Sometimes... Coming off the bench when you've been sitting for a long time, it's not easy to, to take that and make that shot. Oh, boy, Taylor. Tough make by Taylor. 11 points for Taylor, along with five rebounds and eight assists. How good has he been today? Saya Ando gets it back to Kay. Now they whip it over to Shirahama, who goes down, decides to pass it back outside. Saya Ando. Shot clock down to eight. Step back for Ando. Front and back of the rim. It comes out. And Kirk hands it off to Taylor. Two-point lead for Alvar Tokyo, who trailed by 13 points early on, but have battled back. Osakabe gets it back to Kirk. And Kirk again. Look at that. The emotion. They love him in Tokyo. Alex Kirk going for that third title with this Alvar Tokyo team. Look at this. That's called uh, taking a shot with confidence right there. He's living the dream, playing in Japan, earning a living, and really doing a great job. And Pavicevic, he knows 
that Kirk, what he can bring to the table, and Kirk knows exactly what Pavicevic expects of him. And really, Taylor's just been outstanding. Fourteen points for Hirotaki Yoshi uh, leads all scores in the game. Say Ando still has eleven. He's cooled off a little bit. Reed Travis, what a mystery that is! Hasn't scored, hasn't played much. Didn't start today. Started the other day. Had eleven quick points, but Hinari felt like the team needed Nick K to start. Well, for the overall game, and Kay has played well, but it just seems for whatever reason, Reed Travis hasn't played well coming off the bench today. Hasn't been able to get into the game. Here's Kay. Oh, boy. You heard what Hanari was saying, Nick. Go hard. Thirteen points for Nick Kay. Baron Buford catching a breather. Defense toughening up. Kanamaru comes out on the perimeter. Bounce pass to Kirk. Look at Kirk. He is loving it, isn't he? Chalk up the assist for Ando. Kanamaru got open. Oh! Did that drop in or did Scythe tap it in? I'd have to see a replay. Drive down the lane. Kirk has it again. This time a little bit too much. Tanaka kept it alive. And Kay comes up with the basketball. Three-pointer will put him in front if they can hit one. Say Ando. Doing Say Ando things. Dribbling around. Gets it over to Kirk. Or gets it over to Kay. And Kay with the go-ahead three-pointer. A-OK -okay for Nick. And it's 50 to 49, Shimane. Bounce pass to Kirk, and Kirk calmly sinks it to put Alvar Tokyo back in front. He's been terrific in this third quarter. Seiya Ando doesn't hesitate, nails the three pointer. The former Alvar Tokyo guard going up against his former team. And say Ando, 14 points. That's his first points in a long time. He's had some go in and out. He was due. And say Ando shirts are going to be selling like hotcakes after this if they, if they win because he has been terrific in this quarterfinals. Came in averaging 13 and a half points. So he's already passed his average in this quarterfinals. And Kay just, uh, again, just so solid. Scoring down low, hitting the three-pointer. He came in averaging 10. Nick Kay now with 16 points. So Nick Kay has taken over as the game's leading scorer.
Seeing the impact of Kirk as well for Alvar Tokyo. So he's going to sit down. But for how long? That's the question. He's got 13 points, five rebounds. Two-point lead for Shimane, the Sayando, or rather the Nick K three-pointer, but both those guys playing exceptionally well. Another foul on the perimeter by Abe. Well, a little bit of uh, interesting play there by Jordan Taylor raising his right leg up into Abe. I, you know, I'd be tempted to to call that a foul. Might have gotten away with one, Jordan Taylor. I'm surprised Abe didn't react. Nevertheless, Taylor gets to the line, concentrates, and makes both free throws. Boy, the B-League has really been good this season. Now great defense by Jordan Taylor, forcing Saya Ando to turn it over. Thirteen points, eight to six, six rebounds for Jordan Taylor. Perrin Buford comes back, rested, ready, and hoping to deliver. Taylor goes past, gets in the lane, misses. Taylor's got to finish that if he's going to go all the way. Ando bounce pass. Reed Travis, oh boy, what a play by Reed Travis. Finally gets his first two points. First two points of the game. Tanaka puts it up and still can't get the jumper to fall, but it goes out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. Tanaka has two points. He's 0 for 7 from the floor. Tanaka with 10 on the shot clock. A minute and a half on the game clock in the third quarter. Here's Tanaka. Oh, boy, that was a big-time move. Big-time move. He took right, went right at Abe. Perrin Buford lost it. Comes and gets it back from Reed Travis. Back to Travis for three. There you go, Reed Travis with a three. Look out, you don't want him to get going if you're an Alvar Tokyo man because he can carry the team. He has been a, anonymous in this game before that. Taylor right to the other end. And Bar Perrin Buford with the rebound. Less than a minute remaining in the third quarter. They're led by four at halftime. The lead is three now. Reed Travis will it be two in a row. Yes, he will. Six points for Reed Travis, and the lead is six. Shoot to Ando. Oh, boy. All the momentum suddenly with the Susuno Magic. And that was Buford appealing for a foul on Yoshi. Not too much wrong done there by Yoshi, to be honest. Second foul on Yoshi.
Here she guarding Buford. Reed Travis, will it be his third three? Yes, it will. All coming in this third quarter. In fact, in the last couple of minutes of the third quarter, Reed Travis leaving his calling card. And just like that, Shimane go up 64, 55, 10 minutes remaining. Maybe a date with the Ryuku Golden Kings will be next for Shimane, the way they have really surged ahead at the end of the third quarter. Well, to say this has been a fun, exciting quarterfinal series between two teams with a lot of thrills and spills and twists and turns, ups and downs, that would be an understatement. I mean, it has really been something else. Shimane winning game one convincingly, Alvar Tokyo winning game two convincingly, and now a real battle. And then Reed Travis coming in and going in, and he has just come to life. He's now got 11 points. He goes from being a player that just looks like he completely doesn't belong on the court to now being the best player in the court. He's got 11 points. Alvar Tokyo in real trouble. Tanaka. I don't think they can afford to settle for jump shots. Scythe gets it down low, turn around. That was short. And uh, Taylor scrapping away for the basketball. And remember, would love to hear what Hanari has to say about his approach to starting K and bringing you know, Travis off the bench. And this this right now is a huge substitution, both with Ando. And Alex Kirk in the game. And, and really, if Albert Tokyo are going to win, maybe the answer is uh, is Kirk. He's going to have to be involved. Especially offensively. Travis, though, wow, that time they left him open. Really short. That was a, a shot they would have paid for, the way he'd been shooting the basketball. They're up by 11 points. Osakabe puts it up and authoritative rebound by Kanamaru. Look out, step back for Perrin Buford, and he was short as well, but look at that. Travis gets in there for the offensive board. This is Shimani's game to win or lose right now. They are in control. Here is Buford, and he's fouled by Scythe. Goodness me. What a turn of events. And really, 
it all happened with Travis. It didn't happen immediately with his insertion into the game in the third quarter, but that's when it happened after he was on the floor for about a minute. He missed his first shot, but all of a sudden, he just took over, and he has transmitted all of those positive vibes, that confidence to his team, and they have come out and surged back into a double-digit lead. Look at him there. It doesn't have to be just about the three-pointers. Sometimes you got to take what the defense gives you. Well, it was that laser focus that really helped Tanaka and Alvar Tokyo in game two. And they need to be laser focused right now for the remaining eight and a half minutes. They need a couple of plays to go their way. And you feel like they might have a chance. But right now, Shimane are just this explosive team. The players, their confidence has been restored. I mean, Travis... And Buford are every bit tormenting them the way they would hope so before the game, Shimane. Alvar Tokyo did such a great job of neutralizing the impact of them in game two. And for part of this game, and now they've got to contend with them again. Long way to go, though. Eight and a half minutes. Uh, but all the momentum with Shimane. Well, Buford has uh, returned to good form today, and he completes the three-point play, 13 points. 14-point advantage. Their biggest lead had been 13, so their biggest lead of the game. That is ominous. Oh, great play by Travis. Doing it on the offensive end and on the defensive end. Look out. Travis catches it on the low block, goes up. Oh, what a finish. What a finish. He's gone from being in nowheresville to the best player on the court, and he might just be the MVP of this quarterfinal series. He has been sensational since coming into the game in the third quarter. Sixteen point advantage. Yohama called for the foul in the backcourt. Well, this has got to be Jordan Taylor time. Jordan Taylor and Kirk. Maybe Jordan Taylor getting into the paint. Scoring, here we go. He puts it up, short. Gets the rebound. Beats it, and misses another one. Felt like he needed somebody that really was uh, supremely confident, but even that wasn't good enough. And now Travis, oh my goodness. This time he turns it over. Taylor in the open floor. Does a great job, Taylor. He was actually trying to get Buford to commit the foul. Wonderful play by Taylor. Seven minutes remaining. Buford. Alvar Tokyo, you feel like they need, need a couple of breaks the rest of the way. Here's Buford. Uh-oh, Travis for three. That was long. Rebound Williams, wide open Endo, and I think wisely holds up. Takes more time off the clock. Here he goes, launches short. So you feel like they need him to miss a few shots. They have missed a couple of shots. They need to kind of creep their way back into it. Uh, the 
They'll call the push on Travis. So much pushing goes on out there. They could call a, call a push all the time, but probably a good call. That's a brave move right there, but I suppose you can't complain with everything that you got from Travis, so now you put in Nick K to close it out. Yoshi, boy, that was a difficult pass. Well handled by Taylor. Yoshi making himself available. He puts it up. What a play. Looked like Taylor was hesitant to give it back to Yoshi, and Yoshi just drilled it. Well, Yoshi's really kind of distinguished himself today. Great drive. So Buford at the line. Makes the first. two and now it's coming up on the six minute mark 12 point game oh boy why did he pick up his dribble so soon he was able to get it to Kirk and oh into the corner and that's a cow he misses and the bump and the foul has been called Mark Tokyo today, 5 of 16 from three-point range. You know, if it's Yoshi shooting it, okay. I, I'm not sure about Osakabe in that situation, taking the three. Of course, it was his first of the game. And if you get an open look, you can understand why he's taking it. 12 points, the difference. Shimane hoping to lower the boom. Scythe almost coming up with a steal. Buford. Taylor. Well, Taylor desperate and and really shots being attempted that just do not look like good shots. That was Scythe. As opposed to going strong to the basket, just kind of flung it up there. Endo. What a finish. And Shimane go back up by 14 points. 457 remaining. They are looking like a team that is not going to be denied. And really, Ando has been outstanding overall over the course of the three games. He's got 18 points. Timeout, Alvark Tokyo. One last roll of the dice. Taylor might have gotten away with a hook there. So Scythe, okay, you can understand why he takes that shot that way, but maybe if he had gone towards the basket. But even so, it's... Uh, you go back and, and really the turning point in this game came in that third quarter with a few minutes remaining. Travis re-entered the contest and just took over. Travis right now on the bench with 15 points and just under 14 minutes played. Travis with four fouls. And I guess that's why he exited uh, but don't forget, they've also got Nick K, who causes all sorts of problems, who has 16 points, five rebounds, three assists. Buford has uh, returned to his good form today as well. 
He's been impactful. Five of 11 from the floor, 14 points, nine assists, five rebounds. The clock is not the enemy yet for this Alvark Tokyo team, but it very soon will be. They need points and they need stops. Buford guarding Yoshi, who hands it off to Taylor. Tanaka. And a little short, and Tanaka just cannot buy a basket today from, from the floor, from the field. Now one of nine. Kanamaru and Taylor able to bat it over to Tanaka. Has to pick it up and hand it off to Yoshi. Will there be a miracle comeback for Alvark Tokyo? It'll certainly be against the run of play if it happens. Taylor spins, puts it up. And even that, I mean, that is a layup that he should be making. Puts it up way too hard. Kovicevic puts his mask on, fearing the worst. Under four minutes remaining. Shimane closing in on the greatest moment, really, in their B-League history. They've never made it this far. Now they're almost going to be in the semifinals. Taking on Ryuku Golden Kings. Okay, solid across the board. We've been talking about it. He got the start today. I think he needs to start. He needs to be out there from the get-go. Probably the only thing he hasn't done well today is shoot free throws. He's now three of six. Wasakabi re-enters the game for Taylor. Facing their biggest deficit of the game with just three minutes and 35 seconds remaining. Alvar Tokyo needing a miracle at this point. Can they get one? Have they? Here we go. They get to the side. The shots are not falling. And with Pavicevic sitting down the bench, it looks like even he realizes it's game up against the Shimane team who have seized control. You just would not have thought this was possible the way that game two unfolded. Alvar Tokyo completely dominated in game two, but it was a three game series. Well, on the plus side, Yoshi continues to make an impact on both ends of the floor. Shot off the front of the rim. So how far can this Shimani team go? On this evidence, they'll be dangerous. It doesn't matter who they play. Next up will be Ryuku Golden Kings. They're trying to put the finishing touches on this one. Long three is good. And I think you could pretty much say it's uh, done and dusted. They've crossed the T's. They've dotted the I's. And Shirahama with that three-pointer stretches the lead to 18 points. Scaling new heights. That's what this Shimane team has done this season. And the way they have been able to bounce back from their game two disappointment has been something to behold. A lot of credit needs to be shared across the board from all of these guys, probably uh, with, uh, with Perrin Buford more than anybody because he has answered the call today after a very, very difficult second game when he was 
non-existent. He was completely taken out of the game, but he has come back and played very well today. 14 points, 9 assists, 6 rebounds, and also a couple of block. Or Sorry, he's got one block. Uh, Ando continues uh, to excel. He's got 18 points. Nick Kay has got 17 points, 15 for Travis. I mean, really, the, the, the spark they needed was provided by Travis. So I'm guessing he will not get the MVP. I'm guessing it's probably going to be uh, Saya Ando, who, uh, don't forget, played for Alvark Tokyo and helped them win a title. And now he's with the enemy. And isn't it funny how sports works sometimes? This is probably going to mean more to him than anybody. Taylor back in. I mean, it's really unthinkable to come back from 18 with two, two minutes remaining. They can't waste time. They got to get shots up. Boy, it's Scythe. They're just not programmed that way. Two points gets it back to a 16-point game. 149 remaining. I think you got to put up your threes. Buford. And this team will be in no hurry whatsoever. It'll probably be a tough pill to swallow for Alvark Tokyo the way they played in game two. You could say the better team won, but Alvark Tokyo know that if they had come out and played just a little bit better in that third quarter, if they'd figured out Travis hadn't allowed him to get off the way that he did, this might be a different result. Uh, but Travis really changed the game and uh, transferred that confidence to his, uh, to his teammates. So Scythe, the MVP of last year's finals with Chiba Jets, his season is going to end in the quarterfinals. And Alvar Tokyo, who still nobody will ever take those two titles away from them that they won back-to-back. -back. But Shimane, Susano Magic showing... They are going to have their proudest moment. They are seizing the day. And Scythe has just fouled out of the contest. Well, another solid season for him. But when you play a game three, you got to come out. I mean, to be fair, they did overcome a very very tough start they had a 13 point deficit they overcame that to come back to take the lead Sanaka knows he didn't play his best. That man did. Yoshi, he was their best player. So if you're looking to draw on the positives, look at the play of Yoshi. For Alvar Tokyo. And, you know, the one thing that comes to mind is consistency. And you look at the play of Seiya Ando. He's been pretty consistent. Probably the mark of uh, excellence. Has he been dominating? No, but he has been, he's been able to score in bursts. He's raised his, his game at the right moments. I think you would say that probably Nick K is consistent. Say Ando now dribbles the ball and he's gonna hear a lot of applause. And again, I would be awfully surprised if Saya Ando is not the MVP of this quarterfinal series. So the final five seconds tick off the clock on the shot clock. He's gonna let it go all the way down, turn it over. 
And I guess Alvark Tokyo, their players will inbound the basketball. One last substitution here for Shimane allows Seiya Ando to come out to hear the applause. Kitagawa comes back in. He won't be too bothered. Goto also comes back in. Those two guys, well, they'll get a chance maybe to play in the next round against Ryuku as well as Kosaka. All those guys got decent playing, decent minutes yesterday in their blowout defeat. So they came, they saw, and they definitely conquered Shimane despite the adversity they had to overcome after their game two defeat. They break open a close game in the third quarter and they win it 80 to 62 over Alvark Tokyo. Kiss on the head from Alex Kirk for Seiya Ando, the former teammates. Aki Tanaka did not play well in the first half, didn't, never really came close to, to matching what he was able to do in game two today. And that was something that really hurt them. But overall, it felt like Alvark Tokyo were playing as well as they needed to play until Travis entered the game and changed the complexion of the game. He had no points when he entered the game late in the third quarter and then just completely caught fire. Made six of 10 shots from the floor. Travis in 14 minutes at 15 points and really, really was in my opinion, the hero of this game. But again, I would be awfully surprised if Seiya Ando is not the MVP of this quarterfinal series. Tanaka, disappointment for him. He knows uh, what it's like to experience the high of winning the title. And uh, what must the Alvark Tokyo fans be thinking about looking at Seiya Ando, knowing that he used to be one of them? Well, Alvark Tokyo, they need to really celebrate the fact that they've got a player like Yoshi who, you know what, he is solid. He came out today and balled out for this uh, Alvark Tokyo team. He finished with a, a game high of 17 points. Osakabe well, waves to the crowd. He's, you know, he's got a lot of a lot of years ahead of him. You know, this is a play a, a team that perhaps uh, in the end needed Ryan Rossiter out there. He wasn't able to go. Uh, but ultimately, uh, how do you account for a player like Travis and again, I think Sayando has the look of a player that knows he's going to be named the MVP. He's just excited to be advancing uh, to take on Ryuku Golden Kings in the semifinals. Now we're going to hear from Coach Hinare, and then we're going to hear from some of the players. Um, your support over these last three days has just been amazing. And I don't know, without that support, I don't know if we could have got it done today. So from, from all of us, thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita. I just, I just want to take a moment, man, to thank these guys over here. Like, the heart, the courage, the fight, the commitment. Man, today was, we grew today as a group, as a team. And that's what we've been doing all season. So to these guys over here, I know you guys are proud of them. I am. They're a special group. さあ、続いてヒーロー本日のMVPの発表です。今日のMVPを発表します。さあ、大一番の今日のゲーム 
このワンシーズン覚悟を持ってチームを引っ張り球団初のセミファイナルに導いたナンバースリーアンドセイヤー Well there he is folks as expected the MVP セイヤーアンドアンド選手お疲れ様でした勝利おめでとうございますありがとうございますまずこのクォーターファイナルゲーム3までもつれ込みましたまあ一勝一敗で迎えたゲーム3今日のゲーム迎えるにあたってこうイメージしてたこととか心あの意気込みとかそういうのを考えてたことがあったら教えてくださいいやもう皆さんね昨日眠れなかったと思うんですけど、まあ、僕も疲れて疲れてたんですけどまあなかなかね眠れなくてでもねそんな中で今日もこうやって大勢のね皆さんが集まってくれて会場を青一色に染めてくれて本当に力になりました。いやもうベタなベタな質問をするとやっぱりフルスのアルバルク相手だったじゃないですか。やっぱりかける思いとかそういうアルバルクが対戦相手になった時にこう思ったこととかっていうあったら教えてほしいです。まあ個人的なね、えー、感情を挟むともう絶対に、えー、勝ちたいなという思いでね。えー、望みましたあでも、本当に今日やっぱりチーム一丸となって、また今日の試合で、えー、島根スタローマジックがまた一歩成長できたなって感じます。じゃあ最後に、島根スタローマジックのファンの皆さん、どうですか、あの選手。いや,やっと、えー、ファンの皆さん覚悟を持ったなと、えー、今日感じました<笑>皆さんいいですセミファイナルですよ<笑>もう来年とか再来年とかこんなチャンス回ってきませんよみんなで掴みに行きましょうありがとうございましたありがとうございました安藤選手にメッセージいただきましたそして安藤選手にサインいただきましょう Well, say Ando coming out and saying, I couldn't sleep last night, but all the fans made this court blue, and it was a great power. So, from this game, Shimane、uh, could get ahead. So, help him get. Over the hump in that third quarter. He also said, Ando,、uh, let's take advantage of this chance with all of you fans. You know, let's keep moving, keep this thing moving in the right direction. ラストのホームゲーム松井総合体育館島根サノマジックホームコートではラストのホームゲームということで選手の皆さんからメッセージをいただきたいと思いますそれでは後藤翔平選手お願いします So now we're going to hear from、uh, Goto 皆さんこんばんは、えー、今シーズンもたくさんの応援ありがとうございました沖縄に今週末行って僕ら勝って帰ってきますのでまたあのテレビ越しに熱い応援よろしくお願いしますありがとうございましたさあ続いてニック選手お願いします Just want to say thanks for coming out Your support throughout the season has been tremendous and hopefully we can make you proud of these finals So, Goto coming out and saying this is the last game for the home arena. Of course, Ryuku with the,、uh, the best record. We have to go there. まあ、セイヤーみたいに上手にはしゃ,べしゃべれないんですけども、あのー、コツコツ積み上げていきたいと思います。まだまだ応援よろしくお願いします。<笑>北川選手、お願いします。皆さん、こんばんは。えー、今日も、so、saying that we'll go to Okinawa and get wins at Ryuku, so please、uh, give us a boost by watching the TV. I'd be surprised if some of the fans tried to make it. Well, 
、えー、沖縄でも、えー、精一杯頑張ってきますので応援お願いしますさあ続いてウィリアムスニーカ選手お願いします皆さんこんにちは今シーズンは僕のキャリアで一番ベストですだからあ皆さん本当にありがとうございましたラブウィリアムスピーキングジャパニーズ Let's see, so go back before Kanemaru, and、uh, I can't remember who it was. Thanks for the last three days. I want to make the efforts. I'll make my best in Okinawa. Well, there's the guy that really turned things around, Travis. I mean, he was outstanding, and you could probably state a case that he was the MVP of this、uh, quarterfinals, the way that he played in the big moments. Uh, but I think they got it right with Ando because he just wore his heart on his sleeve and came out and. I think we have said thanks for the three days. I want to make、uh, all the effort for you guys. And we heard Travis. Excuse me, that was、uh, Kanamaru.、Uh, sorry, it was Williams who said we'll make our best in Okinawa too. And then、uh, our last friend there said, long time no see today's game. It's surprising. Well, he said it was surprising for him. And he said, let's,、uh, let's go to Okinawa. I think you got the gist of that from Kosaka looking ahead to Okinawa. First and foremost, I just want to thank my, my beautiful wife. Um, just support me. And there you go. There's the smartest man in town, Perrin Buford, thanking his <laughs> just, wife. Just supporting me throughout the season,、um, through my mood swings when we, when we lose or my highs and my lows. So I definitely thank you for your sacrifice. And to the fans,、um, you know, I'm just beyond grateful for you guys' support. You guys continue to come out.、Um, we needed you guys、uh, this week, but you've been supportive all season. So I'm definitely、um, grateful for that. So thank you. えー、まずはですね、えー、今シーズンも、えー、ここまで一緒に人生を、ね、サポートしていただいた私の撮影する妻に、えー、お礼を言いたいと思います。非常に<笑>いつもどんな時もですね、味方となって勝った時も負けた時も、えー、変わらず、えー、私をこう選手としてプレーできるようにサポートしていただいた本当にありがたい存在です。そして、えー、ファンの皆さん、今シーズン本当に、えー、皆さんと共にここまで戦えたことをここに思いますし。えー、ここまで頑張れたのも皆さんの、えー、存在の意味がだと思います、えー、今シーズン本当に大熱い応援最後までありがとうございましたありがとうございましたペリン・ビフォード選手でしたさあそして今一度もう一度締めにキャプテン安藤選手お願いします OK キャプテン安藤 comes out for the last cheer、えー、あと、えー4勝ですね僕たちの掲げる優勝まで最後までベストを尽くしましょうありがとうございましたありがとうございました安藤選手でした、so、Seiya Ando. さあ今日月曜日平日にも、uh, nice touch by Shimane to allow all their players to come out and speak to the crowd after the one of the greatest moments in club history winning this quarter final tie against、uh, the former champions Alvar Tokyo I'm not sure who that is. It's the wife of somebody. I'm sure if it's Perrin Buford's wife or who, but anyway, Williams maybe? I don't know.
Uh, but anyway, she's a fan and that baby is enjoying that milk. And uh, Hinare is enjoying waving to the fans as well as Seiya Ando. Well, there'd be quite a few tolls to make if they wanted to travel, but it would take a day and 16 hours if they were going to drive to Okinawa. So I would suggest uh, taking a boat or maybe flying if the fans do want to try to get into the arena. But I could see, I could see why they anticipate the fans watching on TV. Uh, but they've invested a lot of time and energy the last three days in cheering for this Shimane team. And you can see that Shimane came out and really for them, a good start was imperative. You know, and they had that 13 point lead. And I think it was just a sign of the quality of the experience of Alvar Tokyo that they were able to storm back. And also the uh, overall excellent play of Yoshi. They were able to come back and take the lead themselves. But at the end of the day, uh, Shimane were able to pull ahead. And you'll, you'll remember when it happened, you know, it was really tight in the third quarter. Past the midpoint of the third quarter when Things not looking great for Shimane, but Travis came into the game and just his quality got them over the hump. And uh, then it just kind of transferred to everybody and they were able to pull away for a big win. So Ryuko Golden Kings await. And that will be a tough opponent to put it mildly. And you know, you think about what potential ad advantages uh, Ryuko might have, well, for starters, they're going to be tough down low uh, from a rebounding standpoint. Uh, they're going to have to work double duty. Uh, they'll want to play to their strengths. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but Williams is going to have his hand full, hands full going up against Alan Durham, going up against Jack Cooley. Uh, but they got it done today and even though at times they didn't play well, but they were able to play well when they had to, and that was the key. And again, uh, with Perrin Buford, to be able to bounce back from such a, really a horrendous game too, is probably the best way you could put it, and to play well today, the way that he did, really speaks volumes about how good he is. You pretty much know what you're gonna get from Nick K. He's just so fundamentally sound. And, and uh, Seiya Ando is just a, a big game. Big game Seiya. Yoshi, again, just really uh, revealed the best form of him today. Taylor had his moments, but I think uh, he just kind of, in the end, just uh, didn't have quite enough uh, to put his team on his back. Yoshi, that was a big play from him. But in the end, uh, you know, it felt like it was the, the play of, the, of a player who could really go out and be special. Uh, Reed Travis that, that made the difference. Uh, when he started making all those shots. K, very tough. Again, hurting him inside and outside across the board contributions. Tanaka finally got something to go in that second half from the floor. And this was the guy that really, really got it going. Travis. And that was the difference. And it just kind of transferred to everybody, including Buford. And they were not going to be denied. Here was Travis having it knocked away. So he didn't play a perfect game, but he made telling contributions. Yoshi, that was a terrific effort from him. But it was already at a point where they just weren't going to be denied this Shimane team.
Even Shirahama hitting that three-pointer. And smiles all around. And warm congratulations from Alvark Tokyo. So the stats, uh, end of game stats, as you digest those. Six more threes made today by Shimani, so that was big. They won the rebounding battle, which, you know, Alvark, that was a priority for them. They weren't able to take care of that priority. Um, they fast break points. They were able to control the fast break, uh, Alvark, just two fast break points. But you had uh, also 28 points in the paint for Shimani, and you had 17 points off the bench, 15 points off the bench for Alvark Tokyo, 26 points in the paint. So that's pretty even in that sense. And also 12 turnovers for Shimani and eight turnovers for Alvark. Alvark actually had 11 points off the Shimani turnovers. Shimani had nine points off of the Alvark turnovers. But yeah, that three-point shooting, I think, was really crucial. And that was where Reed Travis came in and wreaked havoc. He made three of his team's 11 three-pointers. And finished with 15 points. Say Ando led all scores with 20 points. Nick K was second with 17 points. 17 points for Yoshi led Alvark Tokyo. 15 for Jordan Taylor. 13 for Alex Kirk. Also, Nick Kay talking about his across-the-board contributions, finishing with 10 rebounds, as did Williams. Williams had 10 rebounds go with his nine points, so almost had a double-double. And Buford had six rebounds, eight rebounds for the point guard Jordan Taylor, leading Alvark. Tokyo Kirk had five and Yoshi four. And Buford, no surprise, with uh, the 10 assists, 5 assists for Ando, and Nick K had 4 assists. Jordan Taylor led with 8 assists for Alvark Tokyo. So, uh, Ryuku Golden Kings await. They won in two games against Akita, and they will now be the next opponents. And you can also look at the B2 playoff quadrant there. So it's all happening. Everything is ready for a thrilling end to the Japanese B-League season. And... Uh, what a day, folks. What a decisive game three in the quarterfinals. It was won by Shimane, 80 to 62 over Alvark Tokyo. Say Ando, say it ain't so, say ya. That's what Alvark fans are saying, but he sure did. The former Alvark Tokyo man led his team to victory and into the semifinals against the Ryuku Golden Kings with 20 points, five assists, four rebounds. Thanks for watching, everybody.